I'm JW Napick and welcome to video two of the SEL Secure Communications video series. In this video, we're going to be discussing the Accelerator Quickset Device Manager software and how to create the baseline communication system. In order to do this, we're going to come to our Accelerator Quickset and click on our Device Manager. The first time that you log into this, you will see the username of admin and there is no password associated to this. However, you will be able to attach your own personal username and password for each individual user for the system. You'll see now that we're logged in, the Connections Explorer is shown on the left hand side of the screen. To begin this process, we will be right clicking, adding a device. Within this device tree, we're going to be finding our devices that we have within the system. If you recall, I mentioned that we will be using a 351S, a 451, the 3620, remembering to right click, add device, the 3530. While it does not matter what order you add these devices in, you will need to nest the devices appropriately such that it mimics the actual connection of the system. In this case, we have the 3620 on the top layer, 3530, and below that, the two relays. In order to start configuring each of the devices, we will double click on the device name, we'll click the edit button, and we will want to make sure that this device is registered in service and is managed. If you're using RADIUS for your central authentication, you will also select the enable RADIUS authentication. The global device ID setting is very important to the system. You'll see that it comes with a default long string it is required that it is unique for your entire system. However, it is more beneficial to have it be something meaningful to you. In this case, we will be labeling this SEL 3620. Next, we'll move on to the connection tab. The access script, we will be using the general 362X access script. For the terminate script, we will be using the general 362X terminate script. These scripts allow us the automated process for connecting and accessing relays through the 3620. Also, we will be changing our connection type. In this case, we are using a network connection into the 3620. The IP address of the 3620 for our system is 192.168.2.2. This setting will be dependent on your configuration and your network schemes. The port number we will be using as the access port for the 3620 port mappings. We will be discussing how to configure this in the 3620 in a later video. For now, we will set this to 2001. The file transfer option, we will be using SSH to provide encryption. And the credential source, we will be using device manager prompt and team titled password. This allows users to be provided a prompt for login credentials and team will use a default built-in password. In order to create this, we're going to take a quick pause and look at the static passwords. To do that, we will come up to the Tools bar, Device Manager, and Passwords. We will right-click in the left-hand pane, click Add, Password, double-click on the new password, and provide it settings. To do this, we'll click on Edit. Password title will be Team. Username will be Team. And the password will be some complex password for our system. Once we have completed this, we can click Apply and close out of this window. Now that we have created the new password, we are able to click Apply and then Edit to refresh the screen. Then we'll be able to select the newly created password. We'll click Apply to apply the settings for the 3620. We will repeat the process for the other devices. The 3530 is next. We'll click Edit, click the In Service button, find the global device ID, and provide a meaningful name for ourselves. In this case, SEL underscore 3530. The connection directory, we will also be changing settings here. The access script and terminate script are not needed for the 3530 within this configuration. We do, however, need to activate the legacy mode, as well as change the connection type to network. Because we are in the electronic security perimeter, we will be sticking with Telnet as our option, and moving to the host IP address of 192.168.3.3.
Port number, we will be using 3001, and in a later video, we'll be discussing where this setting comes into play. Applying the settings now. We'll next move into the 351S, double-clicking and editing. We will make sure that we have the in-service checkbox, the global device ID, we will change to something meaningful, SEL underscore 351S, and moving to the connection type, we will be adding access scripts, including the general RTAC SEL server access script. And for the terminate script, we will be using the general RTAC terminate script. In this case, the pass-through port is very important to our scheme. We will be using a pass-through port of 1 for the 351S. And in a later video, we'll be discussing where that setting came from. For the connection type, because the devices are on the other side of the 3530, we do not care what the connection type is. We can leave these settings as default. We'll click Apply to apply these settings. For the 451, edit, in service, and provide a global device ID meaningful to us, SEL underscore 451 in this case. You will notice that this is a 451-2, which means that we do have the legacy password restrictions of six characters. The default generate password script for the 451-2 does incorporate that knowledge into the system. This allows us to spread six character passwords with a maximum variability in the character set used. For the connection type, we will again select access script, general RTAC SEL server access script. For the terminate script, we will again be choosing the general RTAC terminate script. The pass through port here, we will be using 253. Again, we will be discussing how to come up with this port setting in a later video. And again, the connection type does not matter because it is on the backside of the 3530. Click Apply to save our settings. This completes our video. In this video, we discussed how to configure the SEL Accelerator Quick Set Connection Directory. And in the next video, we will be discussing how to configure the team settings, again, within the Accelerator Quick Set Device Manager and Connection Directory. Thank you for watching.